Brian Walsh is a research scholar with the Ecosystem Services and Management Program at the International Institute for Applied Systems Analysis. He joins us today to discuss a really innovative idea, how new feed sources may be the key to ambitious, reaching ambitious climate change targets. That's right. That sounds jargony. I'm going to ask you to translate that for us, for the, we lay pe people. First of all, I guess we should start with the idea of uh, microalgae. What is that? So uh, microalgae is a, um, is a, is a highly diverse set of single-celled organisms, uh, which are also highly uh, customizable. So algae um, grow in diverse conditions. Algae can be cultivated to produce uh, alternately lipids or carbohydrates or in, uh, in this, in, as is relevant here, proteins uh, for, for an enormous range of purposes. So in this case, so that essentially cows can eat them, That's eat right. the algae. That's right. That's right. It would replace, uh, does it replace grass? So it, it could replace grass. It could replace. Uh, it could reduce the pressure on soy and corn demand uh, globally, and uh, so the the sort of the basic problem here is that on Earth, in total, we've got about seven billion hectares of uh, of arable land for use, and and at the moment, we are using over five billion of them, and uh, about seventy five percent of that, so over four billion is is actually spent on animal feed. So and the other on growing crops and, and, and the rest is is used for uh, human food production and a, and then a small fraction of that still is for is for energy crops. And that, that four billion used for for feed for animals uh, is that growing? Is the usage on the upswing? That's right. That's it's growing and in fact over the next uh, 80, 90 years we can expect it to double. And what's the environmental impact of all? So of this? The, the impact is enormous and this we see um, in we see globally as as demand and uh, appetite for meat grows in China and throughout Africa we can see the uh, the water impact is enormous it's a well-known statistic that one kilogram of beef requires about 30 kilograms of uh, feed the water impact is enormous and and so uh, we've got to look at better ways to to deploy our land and water resources. And, and Brian, now connect the dots uh, for us to climate change. What is the impact, or how does this relate to climate change? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there are a lot of really promising ideas and people get excited about renewables and biofuels, but at the end of the day, it comes down to a land shortage. And uh, at the moment, we're seeing that, I, I'm based in Europe where, where there are ambitious biofuel targets, but uh, we're seeing that those drive deforestation or uh, raise food prices throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so if we can use algae to free up these billions of hectares of land that we're using as pasture to produce low quality, uh, inexpensive feedstock, then we can all of a sudden use this land to produce biofuels and decouple that from food prices and decouple that from, and therefore insecurity, as well as uh, begin to really do something about climate change. And uh, in the paper you wrote, uh, I pulled this, meeting 50% of our annual energy needs and potentially reducing global atmospheric carbon concentrations to pre-industrial levels by the end of the century. That almost sounds too good to be true. Well, that's right, uh, but it's actually not. I mean, it, 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 there is, there's enormous potential here. Once you actually, I mean, certainly no biofuel is on its own carbon neutral or negative, but and once you burn that, let's say, all of the carbon and more, once you burn the, the biofuels we're growing, all the carbon and more does go back into the atmosphere. But if we use uh, carbon capture and sequestration technology, which increasingly is, is uh, going to be, is clear, is going to be part of our, uh, the energy profile, the energy landscape in the United States and globally, if we, if we apply this technology to these biofuels, then all of a sudden you've got, a, you could envision a net negative energy sector. Let's say the United States were going to embrace this and go in whole hog. What, what are we talking about as far as time it would take to get there? How much of the technology is at the place it needs to be for this to be applied uh, across across a, a large part of a continent? Mm -hmm. and, and what are the costs involved relative to the current costs involved? You know, I know that's a lot of questions, no, but I'm no, just trying to get a, chance, a sense of scalability and, and timeline. You know, um, so one, so I want to start with the timeline because actually okay. it's, it's quite clear that uh, our time is running out for, uh, in terms of the glo our global carbon budget, the, the amount of carbon that civilization can put into the atmosphere while keeping, while hoping to keep climate change under control. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in, the last, in the last 150, 200 years of industrialization, we've gone through half of our carbon budget. And, in, and we're on track to exhaust the remainder of our carbon budget in the next in the next within the next 40 years and so 
while it's true that the uh, the technology is not yet scalable, certainly it's it's been proven to to work. It's been proven that cows and sh and cows and pigs can eat this food, can eat algae as feed. It has no effect on their growth, no effect on their mortality, and uh, and they're happy to eat it actually. And so this is when you when you look at it from a climate perspective, it's it's almost an imperative actually that we that we do put the research and funding into this to make it a, a real a, make it realistic. And is is anyone doing that? Yes, yes. I've here in DC. I've been meeting with a number of uh, CEOs who recognize that uh, that as the price price of carbon goes up, then then algae is going to look at, like a more attractive feedstock going forward. Well, you know, for those who are hoping science can save us from our, our, our frailties and our mistakes, this is really encouraging. This sounds yeah. like it has a lot of potential. It is, and it's also a good time to be talking about it with the uh, Sustainable Development Goals adopted at the UN just last week, uh, where people are talking about a $4 trillion price tag for each of the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. So certainly we can get this done uh, under budget if, if that's $4 trillion. And for people who'd like more information on this, where, where can they find it? Uh, th the model has a website, so that's uh, felixmodel, F-E-L-I-X model.com. And uh, we can also um, reach out to me, Eddie Asa. Fascinating, Brian. Thanks for joining us. All right, great pleasure. Thank you very much.